Then we have the fantastic Garrett Soloway of In The Money Stocks in Chart Watch, giving us a summary of what's going on from a technical perspective in gold, silver, and anything else that has grabbed his attention. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the gold and silver chart, maybe go into a couple other charts out there. But the bottom line is gold is doing exactly what it should be doing. A lot of people out there have been so frustrated by the performance in gold. Why isn't it up more with all this inflation? Don't worry. It's picture perfect matching up to what happened in the early, mid, and late 70s, all right? So we are now entering the late 70s period. Inflation is mirroring that. And again, we're talking 1970s here, and you're just before a bigger move up, according to my analysis. And it's important to recognize that while gold is only fractionally higher on the year, and you can see it right here. I mean, if you go back to January, we were right around here. So I mean, you're literally just slightly positive, but compare that to Bitcoin down massively. Compare that to the stock market, the S&P and the NASDAQ down massively. And there's a whole lot of investors that would be very happy to have been all in on gold. But let's take a look at the chart, right? So you had this beautiful consolidation pattern. This is called a wedge pattern. You clearly broke out on the chart here moving up into what's called a double top, the high from 2020, mirroring the high right here. You then have pulled back to what we call the scene of the crime. Major support, it, this is a very common retrace on the charts. Now, from that point on, you're just consolidating here. To me, this is getting ready for the next leg up as it kind of gets its strength back. So the big move up took a lot of energy, it's come back in, now you're kind of settling in. And the key catalyst here, for upside in gold, in my opinion, is going to be the realization that you not only have a likely recession, which is gonna be bad for stocks, but also you have inflation that's going to remain sticky at four to five percent for the longer term. All right, so you talk about wage inflation, we've seen massive amounts of, of, of wages going up. That again is not passed in one swell swoop, right? You're talking about wages. A, a business can only pass a percentage of the wage hikes through to the goods that are there being sold in, in a little bit of time, right? So every year they up it by just a little bit. So that's gonna lead you to the next leg, to the upside on gold. But when you think about the dollar, look at the dollar, folks. The dollar has ripped up this year. In 2022, the dollar started out down here. It's gone all the way up here. Usually gold gets crushed in a rising, uh, in a rising dollar environment. We've seen gold hold steady and even being positive for the year. Then take a look at the 10-year yield. What's the 10-year yield done? And we all know what this has done, right? The 10-year yield since the beginning of the year has skyrocketed basically over 100% to the upside, starting the year right around 1.45% on the 10-year, topping out above 1.5% or 3.5% here. It's pulled back recently, but again, same thing. In general, gold goes down in a rising rate environment. That's not happening. And so what this is telling you is that when rates start to come in, when, when you ultimately have the dollar starting to fade, that's where the next big leg starts in the gold chart. Let's now take a look at the silver chart. All right, the silver chart continuing to hammer on major support. The silver chart's important to recognize. So number one, there's been no breakout on silver yet, right? You can still see the wedge pattern, this down sloping trend line, this flat line on the bottom. It's still inside of that range. Now you might say, why hasn't silver broken out yet? And the answer is simply that silver is also an industrial metal. And if we are headed towards a recession, then silver is going to have a harder time breaking out because again, the industrial side of silver is going to suffer. Now, ultimately, do I think all commodities are likely headed up? Maybe not oil. I think oil is ultimately going to come in quite a bit more than where it is based on um, the recession and potential global recession that's looming. But I think even silver will eventually break out. When it breaks out, you are going to see, in my opinion, a measured move. This is a classic measured move kind of calculated calculation move. So basically a measured move, you take the low down here, which was right around eleven and a half dollars, twelve dollars, we'll call it twelve dollars. The high here was around 30. So that is a that's a $18 move to the upside. When you break out, you're gonna take the lowest point on silver and add $18 to the upside. Essentially, this up move here would be mirrored by whatever the low is over here, $18 to the upside. Now, again, that does put us right now probably at close to a $40 
target on silver. All right, now when could that be achieved, right? I mean, that's the big question. My guess is you have one to two years out that it could it could take a little bit of time um, as we kind of get through this period of, of worry about the economy and the industrial side of silver. But really, if you're thinking about the type of move here, if you get that in 12 months or even 16 or 18 months, that is a fantastic return on silver. There's a lot of shorts in silver as well. Once it breaks out, you're going to start to see it make a massive move. And the oil trade, again, so many talking heads, so, so bullish. I've gone on record and said, there's no way oil is going to break up when we were up here. In fact, I was short oil up here. This is a classic bearish setup where you have this big pop and reversal and then lots of inside bar action. All of this is kind of using up energy as it's taking so long just to get back to its recent highs. You have this beautiful trend line right here, this shorter term trend line and this double top. And ultimately what we saw was you have a down, uh, an upsloping trend line connecting these lows and look at where price went. Eventually the chart dictates this will break to the downside. All the talking heads, analysts out there so bullish on energy over the last month, two months, three months. And all I could see for myself was that the charts were telling me bearish, right? And just think logically, if we are in a rising rate environment, what's the purpose of that? It's to slow the economy down, to bring down inflation. And if you slow the economy down, if you slow the global economy down, is oil demand going to go up or down? The answer is down. And that means prices are going to decline. So again, basically, I'm not in my short anymore on oil, but if it bounces back here, let's say 110 to 112, I would absolutely consider getting in a short again. Just my personal opinion of what I'm looking to do, but that's where we are.